import the plane and position it between the teeth. First, let's recap the flow of designing a single lamina. Make two duplicate of the corresponding tool. Give an effect for the one that considers the thickness of the laminate and the cement gap. To account for the insertion direction, give the undercut block out for the other one. The laminate design is completed by applying cooling difference to mesh B from mesh A. And today we will look at additional considerations when designing multiple laminates to correct it on midline diastema. Even offset that considers the laminate thickness and the cement gap for the duplicated foot match. Fill in the space between the teeth. It is easy to go off to one side if you don't have some sort of guideline. It will be helpful to use the virtual plane to bisect the space first. Use the plane as a reference to fill in the space and cut off the part that goes beyond the plane to easily complete the adjacent side. Make an undercut block out the other duplicated mesh in the insertion direction. Depending on the direction of the block out, there may be a large space between the laminate and the two from the inward side. You can reduce the space between the tooth and the laminate by block out at different angles. The singularity is the plane that dissects the space. You can use this plane to design evenly distributed laminates and fit adjacent surfaces together. The mesh density and orientation of the plane will be important to note. Wonder method design. Import the maxilla and mandible scan data. Click edit mode. Select the duplicate feature. Make two duplicate of tooth number 31 and 41. With the first set of duplicates, create the outer surface of the laminate. Use the fill hole feature to close the holes. Use mesh bridge feature to fill the unfilled area. Give 0.13 mm offset to mesh A to account for the 0.1 mm laminate thickness and 0.03 mm cement gap. Give the model an offset of 0.03 mm for the cement gap. Import the plane and position it between the teeth. Depending on the mesh density, the bullion result may vary. If the mesh density becomes too low, it may not be cut properly. You can fix this by increasing the mesh density of the plane to make it similar to the other mesh densities. Use the scuffing feature to fill spaces. Lock the existing model and plane to protect them from deformation during modification. Fill the space to the left and right of the plane. When the modification is completed, cut the mesh according to plane. The result depending on the orientation of the plane. The mesh has a front and back orientation. The mesh at the front of the plane will remain, while the mesh at the back of the plane will be erased. In this video, the front of the plane is facing tooth number 31, so 31 can be cropped without changing the plane orientation. Conversely, cropping tooth number 41 as it is, will not produce the desired result. You will need to reverse the plane orientation to face 41 and cut it out. The second set of duplicates will be used for the inner surface of the laminate. 
use the Ulaga feature to create the insertion direction. The insertion direction will determine the gap between the tooth and the laminate on the lingual side. We recommend an insertion direction that minimizes the gap. Pulling the balance of mesh B and mesh C from mesh A to complete the laminate. Use the measure function to create a cross section to verify the 0.03 mm cement gap and 0.1 mm laminate thickness.